I am honored to be here today representing Sri Lanka at the Transforming Education Pre-Summit, where a common platform is provided to deliberate on important matters concerning transforming education globally. At the outset, I would like to appreciate the generosity of the stakeholders and partners involved in this pre-summit, especially the youth engagement. The world, during the last two years, has been experiencing one of the greatest crises in modern history, in the form of outbreak of the COVID-19 pandemic. However, Sri Lanka successfully contained the spread of the virus with many proactive measures and a whole of government approach leading to a successful vaccination rate. Madam Chair, during the pandemic, Sri Lanka with its available resources adopted the use of distance learning methods and digital media, television broadcasting to disseminate subject materials and virtual media platforms like Zoom were used to conduct classroom interactions. Although these facilities were put in place, the outreach was not sufficient due to issues with telecommunication infrastructure and access to internet in homes or poorer sections of society, thus causing disparities. Hence, it is of utmost importance to focus our discussions today towards the existing digital divide and the need to develop digital solutions to ensure full and equal participation of all learners to close bridge gaps in digital access, knowledge, skills, and leadership. Looking to the future, building capacities of teachers to offer transformative education, learning and skills of life, work and sustainable development, redressing of gaps in digital literacy, as also provision of digital infrastructure and STEM education, research and curriculum development, and improvements of pedagogy for distance learning will need to be prioritized in the government policies. In Sri Lanka, education reforms in all sectors have been planned to meet the challenges in the 21st century, and the process already started. It is increasingly becoming clear to all nations of the world that many issues such as COVID-19 pandemic, climate change, and the attainment of the sustainable development goals need our cooperation at multilateral, bilateral forums. Innovative finance to unlock critical investments in lower middle income countries is highly appreciated. I welcome the proposal, proposed effect launch at TES in September 2022. This initiative will help us to bridge the gap in the budgetary provisions in next few years and guarantee the equitable and quality education for all. Therefore, I urge the international community to not view education as a consumption, but an investment with long-term returns to continuously deepen the dialogues between the ministries of education, finance, and also the IMF, World Bank, ADB, and other multi-bi-stakeholders, donors, and funding agencies towards enhanced finance for education. As policymakers, I hope that today's deliberations on transformative actions on education will pave the way for safeguarding the right of every child on equitable access to quality education without discrimination. Thank you.